Everybody. Welcome to A Recent Talks. This is the first in what we hope will be a series of talks on a range of subjects. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about A Recent Productions. It's a theatre company that was formed in 2018 with the specific aim of providing a platform for African and African Caribbean creatives to showcase their talents, um, basically telling our stories our way. This afternoon, we're lucky enough to have two experienced actors who have given up their time to come and talk to us. And um, there will be time for questions at the end. Please do use the chat facility on YouTube for any comments or questions, which we will come to later. So I'm going to start by introducing Shayun Shote, who is a uh, recent production's co-artistic director Shane's many stage credits include the title role in Siswi Bansi is Dead at the Joseph, Stephen Joseph Theatre, Alimi in Death and the King's Horseman at the National, multiple roles in One Man, Two Governors at the National, and Samuel in Play Mass for Orange Tree, which he was Offie nominated. In 2019, he completed filming an episode of Black Mirror and a national tour of the Prince, the play, Princess and the Hustler. He recently appeared alongside James McAvoy in Jamie Lloyd's Serrano de Bergerac, and lockdown sadly brought a temporary close to Shane's appearance in The Seagull at the Playhouse Theatre. During lockdown, Shane was cast in the BBC Radio 4 drama Oil on Water. Now then to Danny Sapani. Danny is our new patron, hooray for us. He's a British born actor of Ghanaian descent. His work spans film, television and theatre. He's a graduate of Central School of Speech and Drama. He is perhaps best known for his portrayal of Sabini in Penny Dreadful, Tony Morecambe in Misfits, as well as roles in Doctor Who, Star Wars, The Last Jedi and Black Panther. Um, he recently appeared as Jahan Zakari, Prime Minister in the critically acclaimed TV series Mother, Father, Son, Jamie, and Jamie in Killing Eve. He is currently working on Showtime series adaptation of the Xbox game Halo, playing Captain Jacob Keyes. So welcome to both of you. I will open the floor perhaps with just um, a general question, just asking how you guys have been doing and dealing with the pandemic. So Danny, you're still on mute. Well, I'll, I'll carry on. Um, it's been all right to be fair. Um, during lockdown, I'm always trying to find the, um, the silver lining wherever possible and trying to keep sane and uh, um, and balanced mentally. Um, and it's not too bad at the moment. Work seems to be um, to be coming in. Um, Theatre is still pretty much locked down, but auditions are happening, TV and film are happening. So it kind of feels like there's something constructive happening. So it's not been too bad for me. It's been good. Um, yeah, I suppose I would agree with um, what Sharon has said. A, a lot of my experiences were to do with keeping myself sane. Um, I, I have four children, so that, that has been quite a challenge to teenagers and two little ones and homeschooling and uh, being a chef, three meals a day, all of that sort of stuff. But um, work-wise, I was able to, um, well, but generally we were keeping fit because we were making sure that we make good use of the hour um, that we had to do some outdoor activity. So there was a lot of cycling and running. So that, that, that was very helpful. And actually I was quite consistent with my fitness, which is makes a huge difference to your mental um, mm -hmm. state and the sense of um, well-being. So that was um, quite successful. And I managed to do a couple of radio plays 
Um, and as Sharon said, it's things seem to be kind of picking up again now. So um, right. I'll be back at work next week. And uh, I made a film in the short period of time since we've been... Really? Uh, this, in, this October, we made a film with uh, Debbie Tucker Green. Oh, oh, wow. Good. Can you talk about it? Um, I'm not sure that I could talk that much about it, but it's but because it, they're still shooting it, so you know it's probably it, well, maybe but, just a little uh, bit. Well, it's just basically the play um, that you might have seen at the Royal Court. It was on at the Royal Court yes. a year or two years ago, and um, and she and they're making a movie yeah, and the, in the feature. Which, and, and which the, play? Ear for I. Ear for I. Yeah. I saw it. It was it was excellent. It was yeah. fantastic. Very much um, uh, on 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 topic right now. The, the, the yes. Theme of the play. So 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 that was a great thing to be involved in. Yeah. Yes. And and speaking of on on topic, of course, one of the the huge things to happen during lockdown was the resurgence of the Black Lives Matters uh, mm -hmm. protests. Mm -hmm. um, and the impact that has had on our industry, the acting mm. industry and the creative industries. Mm. Um, Danny, what has been your take on that? Well, I suppose from a, you know, it's, it's a tricky one really because you've got a personal um, and a very private um, response to, to, to that, which is something that we, we, we have to live with every day. And then there's obviously the, um, the public one, um, and 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 why I say I think these two things are different is because, you know, I don't personally feel it's um, I'm reacting to that situation. You know, watching George Floyd be murdered in cold blood on on screen. You know, um, I'm watching that as as a human being, first and foremost. You know, and 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 then obviously, you know, the fact that I am a black man, he is a black man, and this is something that has happened too often. And 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 then there's this great huge global um, response to this, which is, which is one in which you're being asked for your opinion as a creative, as 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 a sort of person in the public eye, on 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 various things related to it, and you know, and you're also seeing lots of you know various companies like Ben and Jerry's and Facebook making a stand, which is something that they wouldn't have done before. And whereas I, I applaud all of that. But I don't want to be, you know, um, I don't feel it's my responsibility to teach anyone how to be non-racist. I think it's something, I feel like people need to catch up first and then and then I'm happy to sort of have that conversation with them. But uh, on, a, on a private level, on a, on a low level, we, we are doing everything we can as, uh, as, a, as a creative and as a person to, to, to educate our kids and to educate um, ourselves as well about how best to make make, make, make this a lasting um, protest. This this a lasting. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, Danny, you recently gave a, an interview to the Guardian, talking yeah. about um, the importance of teaching history in its full sense yeah yeah i mean here um, we are again in another black history month and yeah. and and i think it's when you see you know um you know people marching um against black lives matter you know you know sort of nationalist um protests happening all over the world but particularly in this country you see sort of you know people not not necessarily you know your average your obvious skinhead looking racist but just yeah. you know people in power people in people you know the boris johnson's of the world sort of yeah. questioning um the, the the validity of 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 the protests and 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 the stance against statues or or or, or where best to place statues um and, and 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 the importance of that voice when you see that and you hear people sort of talking about you know Black people in in the sense of n not being part of British history, you know, there, that, that 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 that's the thing that sort of makes me, you know, because if anybody were to look at not just world history but but um, but British history, you would see that black people play a huge part in yeah. that story, and a lot of that story has been 
you know, sort of erased deliberately, you know, after the col the, the, the colonial office, uh, when, when, when they, you know, the colonial government left a lot of the, um, you know, against uh, on the back on the back of huge protest, were, were were forced to relinquish power in place in 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 Africa and India and and all of mm -hmm. the places that Britain had colonies. They destroyed a lot of the records of 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 their involvement in these different countries. So there was a clear clear um, desire to to reshape the story, the, you know, to retell. Or, or, or to, 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 to get rid of anything that didn't yeah. you know, seem favorable to, 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 the, to the colonial sort of um, story, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the propaganda behind that and, and the propaganda machine kicked in pretty quickly. And I think mm -hmm. you can see that all through, um, you know, the way that history is taught in schools, you know, the fact that we spend so much time on the Tudors and, you know, the Victorians and then we sort of skirt over, um, you know, the slave trade, uh, yeah. you know, there's no sort of real mention of, of, of the really, you know, terrible things that have happened or, or the victories, the, the protests, yeah. you know, freedom of speech was fought for by people like Robert Wedderburn, who was half Jamaican and, and, and lived in, yeah. in, in Soho in, in, in 1780. Um, the Chartist movement was, wouldn't have been the same without, without people like him. So there are lots of characters like that who, who are part of the his, British history, and we need to teach that to our kids. Yeah. So they know that they they have a place. They know that they have a place here. They know that they are part of that story. Um, it's not mm -hmm. just you know black history here and then everybody else's history for the rest of the time. And I also add to that that we should eat, teach you know the, the Chinese involvement in British history or. You know the Asian, um, Indian, South Asian, um, because they're all part of the British story, unfortunately. Absolutely. And it's a great story as well. It's a really exciting story. Yeah. Why? Why not teach it? Why not give people a sense of we have arrived at this point in history because of what has happened over the last two, three, four, five hundred years. Um, you know, in particular, in you know that, that that's our time. It's 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 we're doing ourselves a disservice by not um, looking at that good and bad and, yeah. and, and yeah. celebrating it. Uh, Shayan, how have you you know how how have you sensed have or have you rather sensed any change in the rehearsal rooms that you've been in or the spaces that you have occupied since the resurgence of hashtag BLM as as a black creative have, have you noticed a, a shift at Frank, all frankly no but that's not necessarily that doesn't mean there hasn't been a shift um I think right at the inception of the the the, the sort of current black lives matter with um with George Floyd I was already I was already in a show um a, a Jamie Lloyd show and he's always one for getting all types in his in his show, especially um, especially um, Cyrano. There was everybody, uh, everybody from every sort of demographic. It seemed were a part of this cast. Um, so in terms of how it, and actually just to go back, uh, Jamie Lloyd is I guess uh, from why from the job the work that I've done with him recently is a big stickler for making sure everybody seems inclusive, seems feels included. Everybody. Yeah across the board. Um, um, and I felt definitely very, very included. Um, um, but in terms of seeing a change in the way things are happening in the rehearsal room or, 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 or in scripts, it's still early days. But I do feel very heartened by stuff that I'm seeing um, happening um, on social media, on um, in, in 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 the stuff that I'm seeing advertised on TV, the stuff that's happening on Netflix, um, the kind of programs that I'm seeing commissioned that are coming out on Netflix, there were loads of them. In fact, um, point in case there's one um, talking about the birth of a colony, which is all about the the, the birth of Nigeria, which for me was absolutely um, 
insightful and enlightening. Um, and these are the kind of programs that we all should be listening, watching. And these are the programs that shouldn't really be on Netflix, should be on BBC, and it should be on, on channels where everybody gets a chance to see it. But even on the on Netflix, um, and I've got a big up Netflix, because just in terms of, um, in general, um, apart from Black Lives Matter, the fact that Netflix are around means there's been so much more work and the opportunity to work on high quality stuff mm. without sort of being in the line behind all of the A-listers that are in the industry. Um, Black Mirror for me was indicative of that, getting a bit of that. And I know that if, if it wasn't a Netflix thing, if it was Channel 4, I probably wouldn't have gotten to, sit and to, um, um, to be seen for that. Um, and so I just I, I love I love places like Netflix and I love Amazon Prime all of those sort of streaming services because it means that there is more work and that means also there is more writing and that also means they can be a bit more diverse with their casting which also means they're not always looking for the A list because the A listers are doing their own Netflix bit or their own Amazon bit so they have to sort of go down which means there's a little bit more um, um, visibility of new actors different yeah. kind of actors um doing roles that they weren't they wouldn't, wouldn't get a chance to do in the past so what do we think what do we think is the real reluctance therefore of mainstream channels in not in commissioning this sort of content i mean we often hear the the argument deployed that the public the general public doesn't want to see it it won't be, it won't make money. It won't, you know, to use the the media, um, the magazine industry, it won't sell magazines. I mean, what is the reluctance? What lies at the heart of it, do we think? Danny, what do you think? Well, uh, it depends on what you're talking about the mainstream now. I'm not entirely sure that I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm even clear of what that is anymore, you know, because... Well, what I was thinking of is, you know, BBC, Channel 4 or ITV. Yeah, but who watches that? I mean, yeah. most of those channels are now, you know, uh, the, the, their main sort of fare is is reality TV or news or, you know, it's a lot of the drama, um, you know, they don't do make as many drama shows as much as they used to. Um, um, and so a lot of the, when I think of the mainstream now, I feel that that's kind of spread um, now. Um, it's spread much further um, afield across all the other sort of um, streaming platforms that, that we have. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, in the end, it, they, they've kind of been put to shame, <laughs> you know, yeah. for, for not being, um, you know, in, in touch or interested in being in, in touch. It was being run by people who, you know, who it was. It was very much a job for the boys kind of uh, environment, particularly when it came to commissioning. And, and I'd say that for you know all of the all four channels that we had um, at the time. Um, but certainly, you know, now it's become cool to 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 make make programs that that, that appeal to a, a wider audience. And so so they're they're being they're being you know, forced to sort of keep it, keep up, to keep in line. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, I think long may that continue. But, but yeah. in terms of, you know, the establishment, you know, um, I think that there's still a long way to go for the establishment to catch up. And by the establishment, I mean, you know, the, you know, all the sort of um, institutions, um, schools, uh, education, you know, law, um, yeah. You know um, the medical profession. I mean, all, all, so many things need to be sort of re 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 rethought when it comes yes. to race in terms of all of these institutions, and that's where the real um, changes, I think, that affect yeah. people on a daily level. That's what that was. That's where it will really make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now the two of you have obviously Hackney in common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, both of you are hackney boys. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess what I'd like to ask, and perhaps our uh, viewers would like to know, the your journey from hackney boy to you know where you are now, looking back yeah. on that journey, reflecting on that journey, ha there must have been change. And what was that change? 
Well, have you been to Hackney recently? Jane? Have you seen <laughs> yeah. what's going on in, yes. ha in Hackney? Yeah. You've explored it. <laughs> Gentrification. Spread. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so certainly that's what's happening in in, in the manor, as it were. But, uh, but uh, you know, I don't know. I don't live in Hackney anymore. Do you? Do you yeah, man, I'm still there. Well, You're still, still there. there. Do you get me? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still rolling with it. Um, I'm I'm still there. Um, there have been many new changes. Um, actually, um, me and uh, me and Danny went to the same secondary school, Hackney Downs, which is no mm. longer there. Changed to an academy. Um, and you know, I think it's changed loads. Actually, I was brought up in Stoke Newington in Hackney, and that was always same. kind of real classy. Same. It was always even when I was a kid in sort of like the mid '80s, it was already sort of middle classy. But obviously, yeah. they put loads of money on it, and now it's become Stoke Newington. Um, Stone Newington Town, apparently. Um, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's so really good. Now. Like, yeah, Stoke Newington. Mm. Uh, they're on little magazine. But um, Clapton is still the same, but it's getting gentrify gentrified. But I like Clapton because it's still a bit edgy and there's a nice mix of um, of people. But growing up mm. in Hackney, um, when we when I did and trying in, trying to get into the industry, um, <laughs> I'm a Nigerian. I'm from Nigeria. So my parents didn't really get it when I said I wanted to act for a living. They weren't sure. They didn't, they didn't stop me, but they just didn't really get it. Hey, not Lati. <laughs> so it wasn't until I actually finished drama school and came back and then somebody phoned my mum and said, eh, I just saw your son on TV. Then I think that um, the pennies dropped with my mum and then suddenly I got I started to get um, um, a bit more support prayer support, church prayer mm. support, which is the kind of support you can get from the Naji parents. Not necessarily taking you around and giving you money to get through, but they will pray for you and call it pastor. Mm. Mm. They will work for you. Um, but for me, um, growing up in Hackney and trying to become an actor, because I was steadfast from about the age of five, I wanted to be an actor. And that was the only idea I had. So failing to get... Um, Full support, like some of my friends' parents would take them to drama classes. I would just come home and say, "Mummy, there's this drama thing that I want to go and do. It starts at eight, and I'll be home by ten. Eh, bye, go." Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my stuff was off my own back, which made it um, liberating, but sometimes mm -hmm. training because I wouldn't have, you know, mum waking up at ten o'clock on a Saturday to get me to some drama school. However, I didn't have any of the bars of, "No, where are you going? I'm just going out. I'm going to do this mm -hmm. drama." So I just go and do it, and in a, in a way, I think um, that was helpful. Just being able to find my own way, and because I was very single-minded about wanting to do acting, amongst my friends, and um, there was I had four major friends, and they all did different things, and I was the one that wanted to be an actor. And from a very early age, they were kind of like, "Yeah, all right, you're going to do the acting, right? I'm going to do the account, and I'm going to do the music, and I'm going to do the law." Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> we we all found our place. I don't know what it was like. For you. Well, yeah, I think I'm very similar to you in that, you know, I, I, I did um, live in Stoke Newington. We moved to Stoke Newington when I was seven. So I lived on Amherst Road for, and, you know, in fact, we still have a house there that my sister now owns. Um, but it's the house we grew up in. Um, yeah, and it had a kind of bougie side to it, I suppose. Um, if you compared it to sort of, you know, Clapton or, you know, Pembry in yeah. State yeah. Or, or something, yeah, yeah, it certainly had a kind of bougie vibe to it, you know, heading towards... Church Street, you know, yeah. a garden shop on Church Street. <laughs> where everywhere else had chicken shops and pubs. Yes. Um, uh, so, um, but it's always been a diverse place. So I, you know, there, I remember when there, there was a Turkish family who lived up the road and then, then there was the, when the Vietnamese um, kids who came to the school and, 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 and Asians and blacks and whites and Irish and, so it was always very, very kind of mixed and diverse, and I think it still kept some of that vibe about it. So, so you know, they can't they can't completely destroy um, Hackney with all the gentrification, but they, 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 they'll try. But it's um, but also now there are cafes and bars and jazz bars, and you know, it's just adding to it. Ridley Market's still there, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy. It's that, that you know that things are are still as they were, but um, I think. My story is similar in that um, I, from a very young age, wanted to act. That was my thing. And I was surrounded by people who didn't really get that. Do you know what I mean? And um, so I had, like, there were quite a few kids who went to Anna Shares, who were, like, Anna Share kids. 
and they were in Grange Hill and all of the kind of things like that. And so it's like, well, if you want to act, why aren't you in Grange Hill? Why aren't you doing that? You're not going to act be an actor. You're, you know. And similarly, I had teachers saying, you know, it's a really tough profession. You know, maybe it's not going to work out for you. Why don't you consider teaching instead? You could be a drama teacher. And 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 then now I remember Mr. Nappet taking me aside because you know they cared. They were nervous for me. And 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 my and my parents going, what you want to tell jokes? You want to be like Lenny Henry? That was the only person that they knew from this country who'd managed to make a career as a sort of person on TV. Or and then theatre was even kind of further out of the, yeah. their heads. So the idea that you could make a career in 1970 and 1980 as an actor and you come from a black. Um, your background, your family are black, you are black. It seemed completely ridiculous, not just to my parents, to school and to all of my peers. So, I say that, I say that though, Danny. Um, we went to the same school. Um, yeah. I remember Miss Baker. I remember yeah, we were very lucky. Torch bearer for me, at least. Absolutely. Uh, yes, she, and for me. Yeah. She was drama. She, Miss Baker was our drama. Ross Baker. Ross Baker, yeah. She was our drama teacher, and um, Roz, actually, Roz. Roz. And actually, when I was, I think I was trying to get into the National Youth Theatre, and yeah. uh, I remember she took me along to to go and see Danny in drama school, and that was right. that was, um, part of her sort of like, yeah, I'm going to give you a bit of experience. So yeah. I remember probably one of my most vivid memories coming up. I oh, must wow. be fifteen. Yeah, and I Danny was in drama school. I remember him with yeah. hair, the bushy hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> Here in, in in but it was actually the the, the 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 light at the end of the tunnel saying actually there's a way and it's not yeah. actually too distant. This cat used to be in the same you walk the same corridors in Hackney and here right. in probably you know at least in one of the best drama schools in the country. Yeah, and we're making a wonderful go at it, and it was a big yeah. thing. So some teachers had our back. Absolutely. However, um, um, just before I stop. I remember Miss Baker wanting to take me out of a maths class, and we had a um, a black teacher by then. I don't know. I don't, I don't think he was there by the time you 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 had left, Danny. And his name was Mr. Hines, tall, six foot four, huge bodybuilder, math black maths teacher who point blank refused to allow me to take time out of maths because he was like, "Drama ain't gonna get you nowhere. Maths will." And I remember him telling Miss Baker, who was actually at the time head of drama and head of my year, and he was just head of maths. So she she was a bit more um, um, superior to him, and she just told he told her, "No, Mister Chate is staying here because that drama stuff you're taking him around on it's not going to cut it. He needs his." Wow. And actually, as a result, I got my GCSE a year early um, because he was so on black kids doing their maths. Mm. Wow. But, um, this is a really fascinating discussion, guys, because what I have always said is pivotal to the progress of black people in all professions is seeing someone like you mm. doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And something else, Shayun, that you touched upon uh, in your early years, the lack of support and you too, mm. Danny, the lack of mm. financial support that perhaps mm. others who wanted to start out acting who were who had financial backing uh, from their parents or their wider family this is a real stumbling block to access mm. to any profession but to acting in particular i mean we all know that drama schools are very expensive yeah. so i mean what are we going to do about that what do you think should be done about that well, I think everybody needs a champion, and we were very lucky that we found ours. Um, and and Ros Baker was somebody who would take you to the theatre. You know, you need wow. you, you know. She took us to see. I took, took took us to see shows at the National, and and you know, and and then she did that in her own time. You know, after school, and then you'd get involved in after school clubs. It was important to see shows where you could see other people who were like you but just just to kind of see what it was that you were planning to get involved in you know and get a sense of that so i don't know that that would have happened if ros hadn't decided to do that and be quite sort of headstrong and bullish about that 
So she was a champion for, for, for both of us. Um, and Sounds then, like she was worth her weight in gold. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, I mean, I mean, Danny, you know, as a parent, that now to, yeah. for, for a, a teacher like that, I mean, they're few and far between because, first of all, there's all sorts of risk assessments involved with taking oh, children out yeah. on your own time yeah, to yeah. anywhere. Yeah, it yeah. just doesn't happen now. No, it doesn't happen. So what are, where are the platforms for mm. young kids to go to the theatre if they can't afford the, you know, or don't even know about the travel X? And, you know, schools now, drama is very low on the agenda, you know, even though, you know, it, it has so many benefits to 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 bring kids out of i was talking to somebody the other day who said that you know his daughter his daughter had been really really shy up until sort of year you know just before leaving um primary school and then suddenly started doing drama and it just suddenly this personality just grew from from this very yeah. shy person somebody who's really confident and who felt that they had a had a had a place um mm -hmm. and a voice and you know, yeah. no, no more is that needed than than in places where your voice is being squashed. If you're waking Suppressed. up every day and seeing that you are you are the you know, I was talking to somebody the other day who was saying the actually the, the the experience of being black can be painful, and a lot of the time we are avoiding pain and yes. by through so many different ways. And that pain is that you know at very base level that everything is kind of pitted against you from a sort of across and you see so many examples of it and so yes, you're absolutely. climbing uphill all the time and so you know so for certainly for me and i'm i'm, I'm sure for shane the the idea of something outside of what you saw to be you know the racism you saw at school the racism you saw you know on on the street on the news you know the the, the fact that you had I had Ghana, you had Nigeria, somewhere else where 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 you were not seen as other, you were just, you know, seen as yourself, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the fact that you weren't there and you were trying to struggle and get through here, you know, and you had to be twice as good as yeah. as your white peers, you know, all of this kind of stuff reinforces a sense of um uh, of oppression and 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 you know being able to go to a theatre and see and, and imagine and dream and you know this was a this was a real way out for us as as yeah. individuals and um so what do we need to do we need to encourage that type of support for 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 the people who need it most in whatever way we can and it has to start at primary level you know yeah it's, uh, one more thing is like carla talking about you know the fact that he was able to go to um, um, extra schooling with with the, where he was taught by, I don't know if you know who Carla is, the rapper. Yeah, yes, yes, and yes, historian. I've got his book. Um, yeah, yeah, Natives, brilliant, brilliant book. And um, he's uh, he's talking about, you know, these, um, what was the after school kind of education that he had? I think it was like, you know. Was it Stagecoach or something or? No, 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 African, no. African history. Oh, right. So yeah, maybe a yeah. Saturday school. Maybe yes, a Saturday, Saturday school. school I, I, I went to a, a West Indian, well, it was known as a right. West Indian Saturday school on a Saturday right, right, in, in right. Leeds, yeah. Right, so there were there were these things in the 80s, you know, I mean, I, my, my Saturday school was weekend arts college, so okay. Sunday school, so I was lucky to go and do performing arts, being taught by practitioners, and I'm a patron for that com company now and, 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 and trying to keep it going. But the, the, this idea that you can just get by with what you learn at school when, you know, often the, the provision for, for the arts is nil. <laughs> and, 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 and if you're not good at sort of maths or, or, or English or science, then you, you, where, where do you go, you know? And, it's, and, and you know, I was lucky. Um, and, and I think we, we need to sort of create an opportunity where that isn't just based on luck. It's based on, you know, we know the value of it. We know the value yeah, of support and kids um, like us and, and finding a way to do that. Listen, guys, we were going to go um, and I was 
going to have a short break now, but actually we've got so many questions coming in. Oh, brilliant. That I think we have to just push through <laughs> to oh, do right, them yeah, justice. Yeah. Sorry, um, sorry. So we're sorry. not going to have a break. Rambling. Um, I know my, the producer's listening backstage. No break, Satish. We're going to push through to questions. Um, okay. um, we've got a question here um, from, from Anthony H. What did Danny and Shane think about the portrayal of black men in film and theatre? Mm -hmm. uh, six to one, half a dozen to the other, I think. Um, my experience in terms of the kind of roles I've, I've, I've been, I've gotten and been given uh, very early on in my, um, in my career, I said to, um, I've only had like three agents um, and my last agent, the agent that I'm on now, um, I've had her for like 12 years and I remembered um, 13 years and I said to her that uh, I don't want to go for any jobs that are derogatory for, for black actors. So I got, so so there's always this thing with a lot of black actors, yeah, I'm always going up for these roles of, you know, thief number one or these sort of half, you know, two-dimensional black characters. I was, I'm lucky enough never to have done any of that. I have played sort of like bad black characters, but they're generally very well written. Um, I think there are two kind, there are different roles for black actors. And I've been lucky enough to have performed great roles for black actors. Some of them, and actually some of my best roles have been been written by white writers. Um, and I'll point and I'll say who they are. Um, a guy called Joe Pennell, who wrote um, Blue Orange. And I played oh, um, great Blue play. Orange, and there's one black character in that. And um, a good friend of mine, um, Jimmy Akimbola, said of Blue Orange and the part of Christopher, which is the black character, that it's almost one of our Hamlets. Um, um, mm. uh, Hamlet uh, in terms of its, its gravitas and how powerful that piece is um, to do. And I've also done, um, also another white writer, Afo Fugard, in which you, you mentioned the credit um, Sisu Banzi is dead. And both of these have been white writers who have written for um, for black actors impeccably, in my opinion. Um, but I'm also very aware that there are many roles, especially on TV and in film, that don't necessarily um, aren't necessarily conducive um, for the upliftment of, of of black people mm. and, and black men in general, uh, black actors, black characters, black people in general. Um, but I would say six to one, in my experience has been very, I think there's, there, in my career, there's been the opportunity to be able to choose to a certain extent, the kind of roles I do. And I'm, and I'm, I'm happy about that. What about you, Danny? What about you and the portrayal of black men on screen and stage? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the issues with regard to portrayal are as much to do with the way that we are seen and see ourselves in society and mm -hmm. um and so you know often tv is just you know reflecting the main you know gaze and, and often we are also performing to 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 the white gaze often mm -hmm. so we're not necessarily telling a story for ourselves to ourselves we're mm -hmm. telling a story written by somebody else which is often you know for them you know mm. um, and so if there's a so there's a difference it's, it's all to do with what where you come at it and who's it for um and uh but i think that that is changing i was encouraged by um you know being able to be involved in many um examples where pe things were written for um, like for example, Moonlight. Why was that such a successful film? Because it was written by black people, almost for black people. There was no sort of we're not trying to educate anybody in this story. We're just telling the story from a from a personal and um, a deeply um, artistic and creative um, side. So the, the, this isn't about color, but it's not about blackness. It's about being. And, 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 and so that's, I think that that is an example and I've seen other examples, um, you know, often written by black people themselves, but not always, um, where, where, where the, the, the story is about a person, 
as opposed to a black person in, yes. in, in any shape, way or form. I think when I first started out, um, I, I, I recognised that I was getting lots of characters, um, roles that didn't reflect any of the black people that I knew or grew up with. <laughs> so mm. but then I decided, well, if this is what's going to have to be, I'm going to have to do these roles and try my very, very best to give them as much humanity and truth and honesty as possible and therefore, you know, change the story. The best part you can ever play is a villain, you know, because <laughs> where, that, that nobody understands, nobody, you know, people have already, you know, cast them aside, you know, down, you know, they, 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 they destroyed them from the minute they walk, walk on the screen because they're the villain. And the, and the job of the villain is to make the audience understand why they are doing what they are doing. Mm. From a psychological pers and a personal perspective, what is it that makes you, what you might call, everybody does it, everything they do from good intentions. Uh, you know, even if you know you're Hitler, even you know, you know you are, you think that what you're doing is the right thing. So th that's that's a great challenge for an actor to 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 change the minds of the people um, who who the, the audience and and and, and, to, and that's a ch and, and so it's a challenge I took on right right from the start and and and, and I hope that it, in the end it, it sort of added to my training in some in some senses. So we shouldn't be afraid of, of, of doing things, but I think we're now in a space where we can tell our own stories and we don't have to play, you know, drug dealer from the left or, you know, <laughs> we, can, you know we can let some, some other downtrodden group take on those roles and we can start telling the stories that really matter to us yes. more importantly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well said, both of you. Um, about, does um, it I think one of the things about the because it was just something that you said, um, um, Danny, about you know um, the stories that get told, and you know whether the story is sort of like a black story or a white story. I'm kind of talking generally about um, programming and the kind of programs. And I think one of the biggest problems is um, is there is there, there's no it seems like there's no middle ground mm. for stories that are just stories they either have to be for the white demographic or from a for a white kind of group of people uh, um a group of people or they you know urban programs for a particular group of people and um i think sometimes there isn't a big enough gray area the the, the part that you know the shows that just tell stories that aren't specifically about a, a certain particular part of the country or a um, particular kind of a person that are just stories. And I think that's probably one of the biggest problems with at least the terrestrial TVs is that they're always trying to make a program that's directly for a demographic. Mm -hmm. And because of the makeup of the population, ethnic, de ethnic demographics, it's a smaller demographic. So yeah. if you're gonna make a voice for us, there's a, there's a, there's a smaller audience. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean the stories that are for us can't be for a wider audience or there aren't stories out there that that are made that are, that are more of a, a gray area that are more about maybe just general working class life mm. or um what it's like to live in manchester mm. as opposed to um i don't know one of those uh like those period pieces or, or murder in some town some small village right um, yeah uh, where that's even misrepresented that there are no black people in there but you know when i think when people start when writing starts to become a bit more gray in terms of not necessarily in terms of the issues but just in terms of the stories that are happening um and aren't specifically directed at a particular group of people that are just interesting and um, exciting stories there, there, there more progress can be made listen i've got to go to more questions we've got some really good questions here we've got one from Carol, who says, Danny, you mentioned Debbie Tuckett Green. Which other writers inspire you? And is there a type of role you'd really like to play? Yay. That's a great question. I mean, I had the privilege of working with some fantastic um, writers from you know, Debbie down to, um, oh, God, what was her name now? Oh, LeBlanc, I'm going to have to look it up. 
Civil oh, rights. Lorraine Hansberry. Lorraine Hansberry, there we go. God. <laughs> a old age. <laughs> but yeah. I'm with um, you. I can't yeah, believe I got that yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, oh uh, God. I mean, I, I suppose there's been there's been quite a few um really, really good writers. But I would say Lorraine Hansberry was definitely one. Um that 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 I you know, a, a play that I loved performing a, a play called Le Blanc. Which was very much about the, um, the the black experience from the perspective of the, the civil rights movement in America, but globally to do with um, you know the ending of the colonial era, uh, imperialism, um, the retelling um, of of the, the whole kind of imperial experience from an African perspective, and that was a, a really really powerful piece and spoke to the brilliant um, you know revolutionary mind of, 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 of Lorraine, Han Lorraine Hansberry. Um, and so, yeah, and the work of Debbie as well, you know, just just people just telling it how it is, you know, just from, you know, not, you know, that thing that we sometimes do when we're kind of talking amongst ourselves and then suddenly a white person walks in the room and you kind of change because you're scared of maybe offending or if we give if we speak too honestly that's kind of been kicked to the curb with people like that you know and it's such a yeah. honest thing to do is to write anyway you lay your your heart and your soul out there and it's very vulnerable making you know but when you have writers that have that type of talent to speak the truth and to you know, structure it and 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 to have it brilliantly presented to you in in such a way, it, it it really does touch the core. And I think this is the difference between good writing, in my opinion, and some of the you know which leads to the bad writing, which sometimes leads to the kind of stereotypes that 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 reinforce um, the the kind of the racist image, the you know, the, the 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 picture, is that that, that they jettison they throw out um they go for sort of uh, familiar tropes that that, that that kind of give everybody a shortcut to 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 the story as opposed to going for the authentic and the authentic it doesn't matter who you are or where when you see something that's authentic it becomes universal because of, it's based on a truth and you relate yeah. to it as a human being not as you know regardless of where you come. And that's the sort of writing and those are the sorts of stories that have the ability to really um, change minds and hearts because it's about people writing to connect with how you feel, not how you think. You, know, yeah. you can all have uh, ideas about you know, what our political uh, bents are or what we, where we believe, you know, we vote for Trump or don't. But in the end, what you feel is is more connected to you as a human being and, that, and those are the writers that i really respect who connect to that nick nick is asking a question about trauma about black trauma i mean you mentioned just there danny about the the, the good writing is about mm. bearing your soul essentially mm. and nick wants to know views on putting black trauma on stage mm. i guess he wants to know whether you think that's a good thing or not yeah. Well, it, it really depends on, I think it is a good thing. I think we are often too afraid to sort of, to speak to a wider audience about what, it, what, it, what it's like. Um, and, and there's often a, a lot of um, shame. And as I say, part of the black experience um, is, to, is the avoidance of pain. So when you start to talk about your trauma, you're, you're, you're bringing it up, you're, you're making it sort of, you're bringing it into your life you're bringing it into into existence into you know it, making it stark uh, so so it's something that we have to work through and be honest about you know and, and our work has to be a reflection of who we really are um, and 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 finding ways to tell that story that 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 may be uncomfortable um, at yeah. times but I think, you know, honesty, with honesty and, and creativity and, you know, it comes ways in which to tell that story that, 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 that also entertain and enlighten and do all of those other things. Because it's not just about pain or just about trauma. 
in, by very token of the fact that we're talking about pain and trauma, there is also joy. There is also yeah. victory. There is also, you know, you can't have one without the other and, and yeah. hope. You know, you, when you when you go and see a show that, that, that really takes you to the depths, what you what is amazing about the human spirit is that we are constantly driving forward despite what's happening in our lives, and 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 that is where that real power lies. You know, and and that's to do with hope, and 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 I think that we we we, we need to be unafraid of our trauma because it actually leads us to telling stories that, 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 that had more um, yeah. you know, social benefit in the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just like on, on, on that subject quickly. Um, I'm a bit like sometimes there is a bit too much showing of our trauma. And um, and I think, like Danny says, because there are other aspects of our um, experience that are more than just tra trauma, more than just mm -hmm. um, middle passage, more than just slavery, more than just, you know, hardship under um, British um, 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 colonization in Africa. We have some wonderful, uplifting stories um, way back in antiquity that talk of our um, input into world history. One of just wonderful stories that I'd like to see more of. And yes. um, I think sometimes I do get a little bit like, all oh, right, that's enough. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, we've had it hard. Yeah, show me something nice, please. Because, um, yeah, <laughs> every year, every year, Shayun, I say, I am looking forward to the, the feel good black movie of the year. <laughs> every year, we have a, a feel good comedy or rom com of the year. No black actors, <laughs> no black characters in it. I'm just waiting for the feel good black movie of the year. Oh, yeah. I think it's a tricky one because, you know, that that is. In, in in the Western world, that's that's our ex that's who we are. You know, it, we are we are the, the 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 oppressed ones. And even when you do something like Get Out, which is a horror movie and hilarious at times, the context is racism. Yeah. You know, that, that's that's the that's the opening context. So I don't know. Um, I think there is probably room for the feel good movies, but, but we have to recognise that 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 that, that is. Our, our our lot on, on in, in in the Western world, you know, if we're going to make something, the, 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 we we you know the minute we appear on screen, we are seen as a black person. You can't hide from it, and it's part of that's part of your story. I I I think that we need to accept and work with that and within that. Whilst also, you look, I watch you know black comedians. I watch you know fantastic um um skits the the the, the real McCoy. They're funny because they're funny, you know. They're they're good because they're good. They make you feel good because they're because they're good. Um, but in the attempt to write good stories, we 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 must we must look at everything there is yeah. and not be afraid of it. You know, I think we need to kind of celebrate it all. You know, because that's where that's where we'll get good storytelling. You know, otherwise you're going to end up with something that's shallow. That's just you know. This isn't about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. we can't, we can't, we can't. I don't know that we can make some of the the shows, the feel good shows. You know, you can make a show about love, but 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 it can't. No, no show is just simply about love. Do you know what I mean? And if it is, it's kind of a bit boring, don't you find? And I'm quite glad that I'm not. Yeah, that's true. I, can't, I don't. I don't, can't tell those kind of stories because I, I didn't know. really like Sleepless in Seattle. Right, you know it what didn't mean? float my boat. Like, so what? You know what I mean? I didn't exactly. get it. Exactly. If we yeah. could tell, uh, you know, a story. What's that one with the, the the couple who you know who find love against the odds? Uh, I can't. So two black. I can't remember the name of the film, but and, and I haven't yet had a chance to see The Queen and Slim or. But just stories that you know where the love has come against something else. Mm. Do you see what I mean? It, is, 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 it just it just adds another kind of I don't know dimension to the love. It makes it more yeah. exciting. You make it makes you want them to win somehow. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I Listen, we're we're running out of time, guys. Oh, I don't okay. know where the time has gone, I but I've, I've, still got, I've still got I've still got questions. I've still got questions coming in. So Talitha, Talitha, who's she's at a stage in her career where she's she's still studying. She's at Identity School of Acting, and she asked two questions. First of all, how do you support yourself? 
Mm. Why? Because acting is so variable and, you know, unpredictable when you start out. Mm. And also she wants to know how to break into theatre because she gets mm. more screen auditions than anything else. Mm. You want to start, Sharon? Yeah, yeah go, Sharon. Okay, um, I'd say, say the question again. So she wants to know, how do you support yourself when you're, you know, a jobbing actor? I'm lucky. I'm at a big house. I didn't move out of mummy's house for a long time. and <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I think you have to get you have you have to get a job that allows you to be able to you have to get another job. Bottom line is you've got to get another job because rent needs to get paid, food needs to get cooked, ultimately. So um but actually, I think at the moment with social media, there are ways to make a bit of change out of your talent. That's not necessarily inside a theatre or on screen, but there are ways of making money around that. But you definitely got to have um, your pocket money work, son, because it's, it's the hardest. Being an actor and being broke is is the worst part of the part of life. Wanting to be working but not even having money to eat, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's a real problem because Shay and as you know when we started the theatre company and we were putting on shows uh, we didn't have any money to put the shows mm -hmm. on so mm -hmm. we did them as a profit share and there were so many actors who couldn't commit yeah. because mm -hmm. they needed if they were going to give time to a project they needed to have money yeah, or yeah. Their, their paying job demanded too much time away from rehearsals. And so there was this constant tension. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it was, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. I think um, that, yeah. What was the second part of the question? She wants, she wants to, she wants to know how to get into theatre because she's getting, yeah. you know, a lot yeah. of screen auditions, but not, not, I mean, it's difficult during the pandemic, but I think that was a problem before the pandemic, frankly, yeah. for black actors in particular. Really, right. I yeah. mean, I think, I mean, that's interesting because it used to be the other way around. You know, you couldn't get you on screen, but you could definitely do loads of theatre, you know, when wow. I was starting out, you know, so it so it swings and roundabouts. I think when I started out, you know, it was like, you know, because I, I did a lot of classical theatre, Shakespeare and mm -hmm. restoration plays and but mainly Shakespeare, lots and lots of Shakespeare. But it, mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, uh, and I think that then I sort of thought, well, why, why am I not getting a look in on the TV? So, so I think you, 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 you crack on on whatever you're doing and then you, you, you find ways to, you know, certainly say to your agent or whoever it is that represents you or go and see more theatre, you know, get, get, get involved in that particular world, which is easy to do when, 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 when it's going from TV to um, theatre, not so easy to do the other way around because we watch our TV on screen. But um, in the theatre, you, you 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 know, there's a there, there's a building, there's people that you can talk to, and there's there's all all of that going on. When of course we're not in pandemic time where you, you know, yeah. Close, but when they do open up again, go and see theatre, um, and 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 take an interest in particular directors. I'd say that's true for any shift that you want to make in 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 your career. Mm -hmm. It's actually finding out who are the people that make that stuff and how you can get in front of them, you know, take an interest in what they do and, 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 then, and then sort of slowly, you know, um, consider, start to think of yourself in, in, in those new, in those new um, areas and, and eventually you'll, you'll, you'll end up where you need to be, where you want to be. So we've just got a couple of minutes to go. So I've just got time for one more question. And it's from Tamara and she wants to know the best piece of advice you have been given and what advice would you pass on to other actors and creatives? Um, one of the best bits of advice that I've been given is um, for auditions. Um, getting the job should be secondary, I was told, but performing the socks off in your auditions should be primary. That should be the first thing to do, a brilliant audition and allow them um, to make the choices, but never go in and put too much pressure on getting the job because, um, and I, the way it was rationalized to me was, um, if you go in there and do a great job, but you're not right for the part, the casting director will remember you, the director will remember you, yeah. um, your your agent will get a good, you know, will get good feedback and you'll get back in the room. Casting directors want to look good too, 
So they want to feel like they're showing whoever they're working for, I know the best actors in the, in, in the city. Mm-hmm. So you can do a great audition, regardless of whether you're right for the job or wrong for the job, they'll remember a great a great audition all the time. I- and you, Danny, what's what's your that's advice brilliant. that you, would, I wish you I were given? I wish I advice myself. But yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> You've I got it I'm, now, Danny. Yeah, I've got it now. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take a penalty. <laughs> I'll definitely use that. Um, my, my, my piece of advice, the best piece of advice uh, somebody told me was that um, not every single job will be the one that you want or, or, or you feel best reflects you or your work. But, you, but, but, uh, but you know, you every single job has something to offer. So you take the little bits from each of those jobs and when the job comes along that you really want and you really, really speaks to you and for you, then then, then, then you're ready because you've taken a little bit from everything that you do. So it's, right. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Just right. like say before we get off, a, yes. just before we get off, Yo, Daddy, I really every time I'm around you, I've I just it's such so heartwarming, and I have so hold you in so much esteem. So thanks a lot um, thank for you. doing. Thank you, uh, yeah. Charita, thank you I, Danny. Great thing you do it again. It's wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Danny, for for giving us your time and Shay and too, and thank you for being our patron. It's, yeah. We're just so um, pleased to have you on board, guys. If you've enjoyed this chat please um, share, like, go to our website, go to our Instagram page and our Facebook page, like and spread the word about the Arisen movement. We're going to leave you now with just a short video clip of some work, one of our, uh, our first shows that we put on, and we hope to be able to put on more work like this with help from you donating to us. The donation thing, whatever it's called, is, is it this way? <laughs> Is it to the right, to the right? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. 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 I hate to break it to you, Jordan, but having a kid is not a way to save money. London! I want to be an actress. Model! Jennifer (laughs) Yoga! I can feel every cell in my body being drained. I just stood there and stared. And what happens in carnival can't always stay in carnival. Guys, we know! We, if you want, I'm not going to trust you.